I went to this location twice. I went to the first day in my Lamborghini, and I went down the second day to pay the money. Mm. That was over. It was one call. They had people pull up, you know? So in that space, my life changed. I didn't just get robbed from jewelry because I could buy more jewelry. I got robbed of my confidence. I got robbed of my, my, my bravery. I got robbed of my joy. I got robbed of my happiness. I got robbed of so much in that, that one moment of my life. And as much as I love God, I was mad. I was mad. I was like, God, why would you wait all these years for me to go through something like this? And it took me going through a healing journey in that space. I lost a lot in that season. God still allowed me to make millions, though. I go, I'm not. And that's when I knew God was with me. He said, Natalie, stop just doing things for money. I need you to get your soul back right. Mm. And I think that a lot of times we want money so bad. Like, we just want money so bad. And we think that money's going to solve everything. But if you don't have your core values in order, and if you don't live by a certain code in life that's non-negotiable, you will get humbled. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like you, you made seven figures or like you, your business product? Net. Like seen it. Net for years. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Let's get this shit started. <laughs> What's popping, everybody? Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast, man. A uh, special edition of the podcast today. All my people out there, make sure you tune into the audio, listen to the audio, listen to the audio. We on Apple Podcasts, um, Spotify, all of that good stuff, man. Make sure you rate, subscribe, click the like button to check all that stuff that the YouTubers say and the little kids say. Do all that for me. Help me out. Share it too, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, special guest in the building, Natalie Nicole, right? Said it right? Got it. I was scared. I was like, oh, <laughs> man, let me not mess up. <laughs> Natalie Nicole is in the building. Um, network. How, how would I describe who you are and what you do? Essentially, let's take the Instagram titles away. I'm, okay. I'm really a woman that decided to go for it. Like, I'm a businesswoman, a serial entrepreneur. But before it all, I'm an impactful leader. I, I look at myself not just as someone that has earned seven figures and still earns it. I want to I wanna be a role model. So that's mm. kind of like the pivot I'm in right now. I, I'm riding some of my wrongs <laughs> as a younger girl. Uh -oh. And, you know, like... Just taking responsibility of where uh, the culture for women is going. So that's where I'm at right now. Let's dive deep in. You, you brought it up, so I'm going to just go there. Let's go straight okay, to it. Okay, let's you go. You're you writing some of your wrongs, right? Let's go back to the beginning. <laughs> before you was this six-figure big dog boss, you know what I'm saying? Like, before you was doing going crazy, you was in college, you was at Howard, you know what I'm saying? You was in the clubs, you was doing your thing. <laughs> what, at what point, did you always know you wanted to be like this businesswoman or... Was it just like something that you found out along the way? Yeah, so from a child, my mom and dad got a divorce. Typically, like, that's what happens, mm -hmm. right? Unfortunately. I'm about to say, and that's so sad. That's crazy. It, it's it's something <laughs> that, but that's why I, I go as hard as I do, because I'm going to break that um, that mold, right, in our culture. Um, I desire to be a wife and a mom. I don't have children yet. And um, I'm looking forward to that day because... I'm righting the wrongs, right? Mm. And where I am in my life right now is like, okay, Natalie, why do you grind the way you grind? It started from a child, from lack. My mom and dad got a divorce. We moved to my grandmother's house. I didn't have a bedroom since I was like in fifth grade. Mm. So, but I thought it was okay and it was normal because my family's Trinidadian. And we were living in my grandmother's house in a suburban, like high six figure neighborhood where everyone is pretty much like Jewish or like, Black, Sadidi Black, and I'm the black girl that's dark skin. that's called Pretty for a Black Girl Thanks. or Dark Skin Girl. And at that very moment, I realized I was different. And I took that. I was proud of being different. Mm -hmm. So I went ahead and went to college. And when I got to college, that's when the grind just went crazy. Because now I wasn't, my parents are very overprotective. 
very overprotective. I was never like a promiscuous girl, but I was I was a little bit troubled. I gave my parents a lot of trouble. I would sneak out of school. I would go on the train to D.C. I would just do a lot of different things because I was the pursuit of just being successful. Mm. I seen other kids, you know, grind and go to the parties. And I was like, well, I want that life. So when I got to college, I wasn't the party girl. I was the girl that was getting money. Mm. Everybody knows me at Howard. I was selling hair. I was selling makeup. Martin Lawrence gave me my first um, deal. He, he paid me 3000 a day doing makeup Sheesh. for his comedy tour. So my first How many days was that? He, he booked me for five days. Three times five? That's, That's 15000 That's easy. That's easy math. Yeah, so then I was doing makeup at MAC Cosmetics. So I grinded. So at that moment, to answer your question, is when I realized, okay, it takes money to, to it takes money to make more money, and I had to stay focused as a young woman. That's crazy. It's you you t- like you touched on so many things, and like I'm trying to figure out where I want to start. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I start with the childhood, right? You say like you you um you you didn't have your own room. Until- I didn't, and I, I I you know I didn't even honestly. Jay it was like, I don't think I got to an adult. Mm. I was like, this isn't right. When you're younger. You kind of just like, okay, my mom is working hard. My dad's working hard. Like, kids go through stuff. Mm. But my friends were, like, Jewish or, you know, they were black girls that had their car at 15 years old. My mom really was trying. She worked really hard um, as a, a manager in a bank. And my grandmother, you know, they worked hard. But there literally was no room for Natalie. I had no bed. I was never, like, decorating anything. And that was a hard pill to swallow um, at a young age. Because I was thinking to myself, is it that they just are lazy? Is it that they don't have any money? Is it they don't like they don't have resources? Is it because they um, had their green cards at the time? <laughs> I was trying to figure out what's good. So that made me go into a different direction. That was when I started dating dudes with money because I was like, all right. Well, I got I got to figure out how to get this money for real. And that's when my first boyfriend, real boyfriend in college, he was in the streets. And he looked at my grind and my desire to win. It was all right. I'm a 10x what you're already doing. So it was a, it was a trauma. I would say going through that situation because I feel like as a child, you deserve the very best. Mm. Do I blame my mom and dad? No, life happens, and they kept me safe. I've never been molested. I've never been raped. I've, I've never been sexually abused in my life. My parents protected me, and they had me in church and everything. But that pursuit of wanting to, like, have the finer things in life, although she dre- my mom dressed me cool, I still wanted more. So wait, wait, wait. Lassa, can we have some fun real quick? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> So you was giving me your spill, and I'm about to, I like, I'm about to go in, like, yeah, like that's crazy because you know, like a lot of times we see girls and da da da. Then you was like, you met your first boyfriend and you 10x what you got. Yeah. So so you like the girls gonna kill me. We was just have fun. Girls gonna kill me for this, but like you like the the American dream of like the the woman, the epitome of the woman. Like you know what I'm saying? Like just go out, meet this guy to give you whatever that you lit. He turns you up for real. Basically. You know what? I, I'm gonna keep it a buck though, cause they might be watching right now. Like I've always been like a lit girl. Like when I was in college. But that's it, the American dream of a lit yeah. girl. Like that's what they the the, the new age I'm just like, I'm, 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 forget it, forget it. <laughs> the new age girl, right? The shit that we see on Instagram, like they just they got this dream of like, I'm gonna be lit, I'm gonna meet somebody, they're gonna pay all my bills and boom. And I'm just like it didn't really work like that though. So for me, I was in co- mind you, I was in college. Okay, my first college. boyfriend lied to me. First of all, he said he was a metro driver, so he had the metro outfit and everything. Okay, <laughs> wait, wait. So he's selling, he trapping out the metro. Like he ain't Listen, trapping out the band. No, he, he trapping out the metro. I literally well, one day I was like, whoa, 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 what's happening? And that day my life really changed because I liked how that life felt. Okay. So here I am as like a girl in college, a good girl. I'm, you know, making money. So he turned you out. I wouldn't say. I think that we we, we had a, a very Bonnie and Clyde situation. <laughs> <laughs> what they say? <laughs> I'm going to stick beside him. Listen, we were sticking beside each other until I realized that it, was, it, it, it came to a, a halt. It came to a halt. So... To go back a little bit, in college, I always was making money. I was selling hair. Mm-hmm. I was a grinder. I, I wasn't the girl that was, like, going to the, like, house parties and stuff. I really was a girl that wanted to get money. Right. That's what I wanted to do. And my mom and dad, they, well, my mom, she was sign, uh, doing, what's the thing called? Co-signing on the loans for me. 
And because I was so focused on making money, I wasn't really doing well in school. Okay. So I would have to go to summer school like every year. Every year I was in summer school. So when I'm in college, I meet this guy. Um, at the time, I was being booked to like do the club. What's the thing? Like hosting clubs. Hosting clubs, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I did that at 18 years. Oh, he was uh, outside at 18, 18 years old. on the couches with the bottles. Right. So <laughs> I was 18 years old. I host my first club. And this guy, I, he meets me. I mean, my, my grandmother bought me a Lexus. And he meets me. He's in the Range Rover. I'm in the Lexus. He pulls me over on the street. And he's like, and why the heck am I stopping on the street? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Wait. I mean, I, it's, no, no. I'm, I'm following you because that sound like, what were you, what were you like, 19 right. at the time? I'm I'm M18. Yeah, time. like nah, that that was that's, that's normal. Yeah, we pull up, yo. Like I mean, like, yeah, I like, mean we we we, 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 we stop traffic and everything. Like, right. like, what are you doing, like, bro? Hold hey, that's up. dangerous. Yeah, like, nah, that, that's right. normal. Back then, that was normal. That right. Was normal. So we we so what happened was we start talking. I was gullible, mind you. I'm from the suburbs, so you know I'm a little green. So we start dating, and he told well, where me where you from? Maryland, Montgomery County. See, all that's the suburbs to me, but don't kill me. It is yeah, me. so it's Maryland. Like, so even though I was living in D.C., I was not a D.C. girl. Okay, I'm from Maryland, so it's two s- separate situations. Right. Like, I, I was still there were still things I just did not know and I was not exposed to. So I'm talking to this guy. I didn't realize. Okay, well, every day you're available to talk to. Every day you pulling up on me. Every day we're going on like dates and lunch dates. When are you gonna go to work? So I asked him. I said. Are you gonna go to work? Like, do you have a job? Like, I went. Like, what did they say? He said, "I'm on." Um, he said, "I'm on leave," and I was like, "Okay, bet." So I'm gonna tell you what happened. I go to his house. This like maybe a few months later, and I wake up and I smell all. I smell drugs, and I'm like, "Wait, cause I, I don't smoke." So it was like, "Okay, what's happening?" I go out. And I'm like, whoa, it was just all this stuff out there. And I can't be incriminated now because, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, it's 10 years later. It's statute but, of limitations. Right. Like, we don't know his name. Listen, I ain't asking about actual listen, name. We ain't no names being yeah, given out. I don't but know. I don't want no fast names. forward, it, it was that, that day changed my life. It changed my life because I had the, the choice right there and the chance to walk away. Or to stay in that space. And you stayed. I stayed. In so that hold space. up, let's no, nah, let's paint this picture because like you like we gotta make this shit lit, juicy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you you don't smoke. You wake up, you smell the aroma. It's like the little green smoke going through the Is air. It, like just act like right. you close your eyes. You can picture the green smoke looking at air. So you follow the smoke to the living room. And you're like, What's I don't smell? even I don't even follow to the living room. I peep out the door. So, so you look out the door. <laughs> you follow the green smoke with your eyes. You look out the door and it's boom, a pile of weed. Yeah, and it wasn't even like they weren't smoking. It was like they was doing their thing in there. They were bagging it up. They was doing their thing, yeah. They at was, that moment. Right, at that moment. What do you think? I said, so have you ever read the book? You probably didn't. You know, back in the day, um, Zane, like in those books, The Coldest One Ever. I'm like, you I know. remember those books. I ain't never read none, but I know what those books are. I'm telling you, because my, like, my mom used to like snatch them books out of my out the house. I was like, yo, this is it. I'm winter. <laughs> I don't so, get that joke, but there's a lot of girls that's going to get I that joke. I think they're going to get it. It was like, the crazy thing about it is, it's like, you know, you have these, these the names in the books, like the the, the guys that were like in the streets, their, their name was like Black or like, it was like these different he names. Like he might have been Black. Right. He was he was. Like black. Black. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so, at that moment, my life changed. Here it is, Natalie, a college girl that's supposed to be like focusing in college. And now I'm like... Working with my boyfriend, you know, and it oh, got. Oh, so you was. Oh, was, that's <laughs> why. Oh, this is crazy. Well, no. I'm, I'm gonna bleep that part out. What's so, up? Where, where, where we at? <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Now I'm working with my boyfriend." I work with my boyfriend, oh, but it, it changed because a lot of crazy stuff happened. I've seen him get robbed in front of me. Um, we've been in really rough situations, and then the the icing of that cake, where it was like, "All right, you're heading for destruction." Um, I was driving. One day, and I got pulled over because it was. They said I was driving like 120. I don't think I was. I don't think I was. I like to this day. I don't think I was. Something was up with that with that police officer. I mean, you know, girls can't drive anyway, so it's cool. You might I'm not gonna lie. Maybe I was on the phone and I was driving. Why well, was I driving in the rain? I just it just not doesn't add up. So I get pulled over. I get arrested. This one my my life changed that day. I get arrested. My boyfriend at the time we was arguing on the phone. He bought me a dog, and he was like, you got to go pick up the dog. I'm like, you bought me a dog, I got to go pick up the dog? I was like, this is crazy. So, 
So you wasn't grateful, but it's okay. I was, it was a three thousand dollar dog, and I was not grateful. I was like, "Why don't I gotta pick up the dog?" So I was not. I was. This is crazy. An hour and a half away to pick up a dog. Like that was just a lot. So I'm driving, and at that day, I get pulled over. I go to I go to jail for the night. My um, roommate at the time, she comes and gets me. And that day is when everything went crazy in my life. Um, I ended up getting a lawyer. I was facing two years in jail for a speeding ticket. And I didn't want to tell my mom. I didn't want to tell my dad because I was like, nah, this can't be it. Mm. This cannot be it. Fast forward, they said you had like five tickets like in the past three years. And they like, at this point, we got to teach you a lesson. So my lawyer was working with the prosecutor, and it was not looking good. So I called my mom and dad like maybe three nights before, and I was like, hey, I need you to go to court with me. We go to court on Valentine's Day, and they were like, okay, Natalie, we're going to suspend. You know when they say them big words, I'm going to suspend this amount of time. I mean, suspend ain't that bad. But boy. at that time, I'm green. Okay, okay. So I'm scared. Suspend is like what? 24 so months suspending this. Okay. In my mind, I'm like, oh, no, not no 20. I'm like, <laughs> I'm out of here at this point. But at that moment, they did. I, I had to go to um, detention center or whatever jail for eight weekends, and my boyfriend was not, he was not supported. Oh, he left you. He he didn't leave me, he just wasn't supported. He was facing, at that time, a case himself. And he just had a lot going on. And at that moment, I realized my life is heading for destruction. And I believe that's when God was like, I'm gonna sit her down. I'm gonna sit her down for about eight weeks. My dad took me to the jail every single week. And at that time, I met so many women. They were super dope too. It was like so many women, I was like, I don't wanna be here. And that's when I got serious about business and life. First of all, you ain't get set down for eight weeks. You had to go on a weekend. Like it's, that's it like was, it was a lot for me. No, I believe. I'm like talking, for I'm me, I don't sure. listen. I'm not about that life. That's not my thing. And a lot of I think that's what's wrong with social media. I I see a lot of girls say, Well, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Until you get into that situation, that's not what you're gonna do. And we all lit we lit us like wanna be free, wanna be successful. So go do something petty, petty, mm -hmm. and then the courts, the judge to have that type of power. My my heart goes out to people that honestly don't have guidance, they don't have mentors, they don't have coaches, they don't have good positive relationships mm -hmm. to say, hey, it's not worth it. No, I don't have anybody around me to tell me like, Natalie, you're not about that life for real. You know, why are you even doing this to yourself? So at that moment, I just feel like that's when my faith had to get strengthened. Mm -hmm. That's when God really saved my life at that very moment. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. First of all, I think you tell like the best stories. Like the way you <laughs> painted it, like it was. You felt wow. it? Yeah, it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like you driving 125 miles in the rain, get stopped, get pulled over. You know what I'm saying? Like it was crazy. Months, you got to go. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? By far, next to none. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you lit. But um, I want to ask you a question. Even if you did have positive role models, right? We're talking about 19 years old. Somebody come to you, tap you on your shoulder, like, Natalie, like, yo, you ain't about that. You don't want that. You listening at 19, though? I saw my next relationship. It was a cycle. My next relationship was another guy in the streets. And my, my, it's like, did I learn my lesson? No. So, now that it was different, though. One of my mentors, well, a woman that, like, I looked up to that was in real estate, she did talk to me. Mm. Because at that time, I opened up my salon. I'm 22 years old. I have a salon. I'm like the youngest in the city with like a business. So I'm feeling good, but it was so hard. It was, I was still doing bottle service, and I still was like in that life, but trying to figure it out. And she says, Natalie, you have a, a, a situation right now to really focus on your business, mm. but it's going to take you going all in. 
And at that moment when she told me, like, you know, just that advice, I didn't adjust my life 100%, but I did adjust my life. And that's when I got into network marketing. Mm. I said, if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to get the same results. That's an insanity. Insanity is doing the same thing without change, expecting different results. So here I am. 18, 19, 20, 21, still making six figures. I was making six figures. 22, 23, 24 was like at that moment that I said, okay, like the club is not what it is anymore. Bottle service, I went from like making like 8,000 a week, 7,000 a week to like now 2,000, $3,000. And my bills a month were still like $15,000. So I had more month than money. What's going on? Like, this is 24, 15 bags a month. It was making eight bags a week. This is insane. Like, this is I had my, my salon was like 10,000. My, I lived in a condo. It was, I, you okay, know. okay. Yeah, you living like large. I, like, what's know, that lady say? Like, it was like, rich. I was living, so that's the thing. So, social media wasn't really like a big thing at that moment. Instagram was still there, but I wasn't into it. Right. It was more like, I'm in the city. I'm doing what I think is best. I want to live in a nice spot in D.C. Like, I, I've already been exposed to a different lifestyle. Then you want to keep up with that lifestyle. Exactly. Mind you, if you're dating a guy that's paying your rent, he I get to keep my money that I was going to pay my rent for. So now you're not talking to that guy anymore. Now you're paying your own bills. <laughs> you know? Let's play the picture real quick. <laughs> Ladies, look. Because this is what happened on Instagram. The girls be looking at you. Thinking that's gonna happen to them. Now you got. She was getting to it. She had her own salon. You know what I'm saying? She was working in the club. She was getting her own money. And was <laughs> these chicks out here? They ain't getting their own money. Putting all this pressure on these guys to pay the bills and stuff like that. It don't work like that. It doesn't, times have changed. It don't work like that. So it's like, not worth it. You know what I'm saying? So like, you might have to get out there and help that man out. I'm, I'm just saying, cause like girls be looking at you, you doing your thing, and they think they supposed to get the same. The, the same thing you getting is like nah you so at that time though in my mind I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you uh -oh. Jay. I to wanted me. to save my boyfriends like every time like I was that girl that I believe that God gave me them like I was like this is my job I never so, hear this yeah like, I thought that in my mind like I really like thought that I'm gonna be the girl to take you up the streets so wait what, is this true cause I hear this about like PG and DC DMV <laughs> like they be like the dudes out there like slimy, like they be doing y'all dirty, like taking y'all cars and like. Oh, not me. No. That was no. Like, I heard that about DMV. I, I thought that was like a thing, like you just take no, y'all cars princess. and just. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> so let's get let's get to the business, man. Let's get to the business. Um, that was enough fun. Network marketing. Bro, I hear network marketing. And I, the first thing that comes to mind is. Say it. Wake up now. That's the first I thing. I was going to say something else. What you was going to do? I was going to say scam. Of course. I mean, <laughs> network, I mean, scam, wake up now, same thing. Pyramid oh, yeah, screen. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> I'm going to let you do what you do. <laughs> I know. No. So I know some people that do network marketing and they really lit. But I'm just being honest. Like, I never seen this success before I got to Atlanta. Be honest. Just being okay. honest. Right. So, like, I think a network Where you from? I'm from Baltimore. Oh. Like, I'm, see, like, oh, you're, you're from, from Baltimore. The, yeah, like, you from the DMV. Okay. Like, we from, like, that little small little cruddy part. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't know nothing about none of that. Yeah. Everything out of Baltimore no is like... No Yeah. You feel <laughs> me? Like, yeah, we in the... And we in the trenches. Like, all of that stuff, we, we can't even relate. You know what I'm saying? But right. Anyway, two different situations. Facts. So, like, I hear, like, network marketing, and I think of, like, wake up now. I think of, like... I don't even know if there's network marketing. I think of, like, vector knives. I think of, like... uh it was so many like the pyramid schemes right y'all know anything other network marketing thing? i know y'all know something like give me some like you don't you don't remember none uh you have a lot of coming i'm not gonna name y'all but what forex I, I think of forex i think of it's so many things that There's just a lot didn't of network work companies but the people that hopped on it everybody that i know i got this guy named e ross eric ross shout out to my guy he the bros he was always on the network marketing and he always flourished so like it worked for some people so this is this is good. I, I love this conversation. Network marketing saved my life, How? saved my life, and changed my life. Talk to me. There was nothing that I could find legal that could substitute working in the club, mm -hmm. dating a guy that's not really for me, and being a sustainable woman. Mm. There was nothing I can find legal that's going to pay me consistently. Right. So, but when people are looking for network marketing companies. You don't join a network marketing company because I'm your friend. You join the, you join a business and you start a business for the facts. Does the product or service work? 
Tell me a little bit about the background of it. Is this is it sustainable? Who's the leaders? Who's the CEO? What's their vision? And is it going to pay me? You people need to stop starting businesses because of emotional reasons. Mm -hmm. If I start a baby boutique right now, what is my why behind it? What what am I solving behind starting that baby boutique? If I'm starting a alcohol company, what's my why behind it? So when you get in network marketing, there's a lot of companies. I, I was able to earn over $7.5 million in the past two and a half years. So at the end of the day, network marketing does work, but check this out. Talk to me. All the principles that I learned in business, I applied it to network marketing. So there's a level of personal development. Like your work ethic in here, I love what you have going on. Appreciate that. I think it's a very, I love, if anybody asked me about you, my, my publicist sent me information. I was like, okay, man, I love, you know what I'm saying, the, the connections and stuff, and I was already in town, but I love how you put effort in your business. How much you love it? I love it a lot. You I trying think, to make a donation? I, listen, we, we, can be, <laughs> we can do some things. I'm it, no, you like, do you never know how we can build because this is, everything big was on small. Sure. So just like in network marketing, people join these businesses and then they're going to be a millionaire. When I first started network marketing, I wanted $5,000 a month. I wanted five thousand dollars a month so I can be able to pay my bills. Mm. Then I, my first month, I made ten thousand. Then after I kept making ten thousand and fifteen thousand, I said, "Bet I can retire from doing hair." So I made six figures in ten months. So I was making six figures in network marketing before I made seven figures. But people want to just jump up and just be successful. It does not work like that. Thanks. You have to go through your process. So what did you start doing first? What was your first? So is, is it the same thing you're doing now? Or I've been in the same company for seven years. So what is it? So now, do you know uh, Coach Stormy Wellington? Listen, man, you got people. I gotta, don't ask me no questions I, on camera because you make me look. I was okay. So Coach Stormy is like the like when it comes down to women in network marketing, super dope. We, I'll see how we can get her on your show as well. Um, Spell it. Coach Stormy, C O A C H Stormy. Mm -hmm. So I saw her on social media, and I saw this girl that was telling talking about how she was like from the hood, and she was able to make a million dollars in network marketing in seven months. So. I was like, okay, bet. Like, I like that. In my mind, I'm be honest with you, Jay, I wasn't thinking millions. I was just thinking about survival. Mm. If that woman that does not have a, and this, this again, I have a higher university education. I think a lot of times, even if you're educated, you think that you're superior at times. I know I did. And I thought that because I had this education, there's a certain work ethic that I already had, I could skip over because I know people. No, I had to go through the, the foundational work. Mm -hmm. So when I met Coach Stormy and I saw her, okay, she was helping all these people make money, the mission of one, helping 1,000 families become financially free, I said, bet I like this. I said to her DM and I said, hey, what, you, what, what, you, what are you on? I want to I wanna link up with you. She said, all right, come to my house. At that time, I worked a... I think it was a like young thug, free thug, <laughs> a free young thug, thug and Meek um, Mill um, event in um, Miami at a club. So I, I made a lot of money that weekend, but I was so You still tired. was working in the club? I was working in the club. Okay. So how it worked out was I DM'd her. It was one night. I made like 7000 and I was just disgusted with myself. I was just like, because when you're working in the club, guys are touching you. They're grabbing you. It's just, it was a lot. And here I am trying to fight to become a better woman. I had my salon. I just felt like I was living a double life. So when you're trying to get out of a certain lifestyle, you got to go cold turkey for a second. I feel you. I'm just trying to imagine a guy saying, oh, my God, these girls just keep touching me. You get $7,000 a night. I was <laughs> over it. Like, I don't want to be grabbed. <laughs> I'm I joking. I'm yeah, joking. No, no, but get, you know what? It was okay until you got conscious, until I elevated my mind and started realizing I deserve more in life, you start to get uncomfortable. So I saw Coach Stormy on Instagram, and I was like, all right, I want to link up with her. I went to her house, I called an Uber, and she put me on the network marketing. That, like, that weekend? That, that next day, 24 hours. So wait, Shane, because usually, like, when we're talking about people like this, you got to pay to get in these rooms, Listen, right? They do mentorship, stuff see, like people, that. people, like, they don't really know her like that, and... For me, like that was big sis and still is. And I feel like she came in my life in a season where I needed a mentor. I needed a coach. I needed mm. somebody to say, uh-uh, we're not doing that. So I told her my life. I told her what I had going on, like my boyfriend at the time. And she was just, she, I, I would never forget. She said, you deserve better. Mm. You deserve better. She said, you can do this. And sometimes all you need to hear is those words out of another person that looks like you. 
because it makes it more believable. Mm. Although, like we all say, we're confident. There's still a level of fear that a lot of us still have. For sure. So until you kind of like break through that and you tell yourself over and over again that I can do it, then that's when the door opens up. No, nah, facts. I mean, even the most confident person in the world still got some type of insecurities that yeah. they're hiding, right? Like you could if they're you real could, with themselves. Yeah, you could act like you tell them sure. and, and don't have to hurt you, but come on, we human, and that's what honestly that's what this uh, platform is about. It's about like what makes you relatable, like what makes you human. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like relatability sells, like. I ain't really trying to buy nothing. Or I ain't, I'm, I'm not really attached to nobody or nothing that I can't really understand or I can't feel like that we got something in common. You for know sure. what I'm trying to say? So for the people that's listening and for the people that's watching that I don't know, what was it that you started doing that that, that got you in the – not the room because you're in the room now, right? You got you got Coach um, – uh, I missed her name. Uh, Coach Stormy. Yeah. Right, Coach Stormy. You, you, you come over there the next day. What is it, what is it that she's doing that she was able to – walk you in a room and you start doing something similar. So that was the birth of the room. Because once you start elevating, you just don't stop. Fact. Like you like once you start getting to that space of like learning and growing, you get addicted to wanting to become the best. Fact. Like you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So with Coach Stormy was like my first exposure that I had proximity to. Mm. And I never wanted to stop. So I did start ment- getting more mentors and coaches and asking questions and connecting with people. And sometimes when I'm in a room, I don't speak. I but listen. paint the picture. I'm sorry, not to cut yeah. you off. What did, what did she do, though? Like, I know she's network marketing, but what? Like She just led by example. I, she didn't, I'm the type of girl that... You don't really have to say much. You just have to show. But no, it. she this. What was our business? What was our network no, marketing? The business? same thing we're doing. We sell. We sell health and wellness products. Okay. So we're okay. in the health and well. Let me go back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in Total Life Changes. Mm-hmm. Total Life Changes has been around for over 20 years. Coach Stormy's not the owner. She came over in this business and made 50 million dollars in the past eight years. She, so she's getting to it. So when I met her, for me to do network marketing, I needed somebody that I believed. Mm. I don't just get on the stuff because somebody says it's going to make you a lot of money. I saw her, and I was like, okay, bet, you're doing it. I can do this, too, because I'm putting my sauce on it. Right. I've already was a businesswoman. So when you're in network marketing, one of the things that you have to own is your own identity. A lot of people get sauce, get lost in the sauce of somebody else's identity. Oh, this is my leader. Oh, this is my mentor. No, like, who are you in mm. this space? Because when you get a mentor, even if it's not network marketing, they've already went through their failures in life, and they're moving forward. Everyone has to fail forward. In this space of mentorship, you're going to fail, too. I didn't just win off the back. I made six figures, but for me to make seven figures, and even after I made seven figures, I went through a very low point in my life, and that's probably, I'm, I'm not sure if your people who told you about it, I, went, I just got a very bad depression. I was in a, a, a depression after making millions of dollars, and I had to literally rebuild my life again. Mm. So you always have to find mentors and coaches in this season of your life that you're in to be able to grow and to be able to elevate so you never stay the same. Mm. And our people, it sounds, it sounds so fire. Like, we just, just so <laughs> professional. Like, your people got with my people. They told me everything, right? right. But I want you to tell me it. You oh, know what I'm saying? Like, so you was in a state of depression after making millions. Yeah, I got robbed um, at gunpoint. Um, for Houston. millions? No, not for That's millions. Not really. You gotta just you, <laughs> what you type of bag you have. You never. It's not even about the bag. I'm messing maybe. with you. I'm no, I'm with, no, you. I love. I love it. No, this is like fun for me now because when you're healed, you can talk about it, right? As you see, my security's here. I move different all the time because when you get to a different, as, as, when you're growing in life, you gotta always remember that you're not the same person you was before. Facts. I forgot that. That's the part I forgot. I was semi grounded. So here I was, Lamborghini. Um, you know, my, my boyfriend at the time just got me, like, you know, some jewelry, whatever I had on. Had no business even wearing that that day. And I was feeling good about life that day. Mm. And I got in that space that I was in because it was still pandemic. I w- people were in masks. I wasn't thinking. From, from where we from, we not getting got like that, mm. you know? So I went to Houston, Texas with my I, I had my guards down. I always had my guards down. And at that moment, my boyfriend, he at the time, he was out of town. He's from Detroit. He was out of town. And I didn't know anybody in Houston. So I was looking for a, I was looking for a venue. And I went to this location twice. I went to the first day in my Lamborghini. And I went down the second day to pay the money. Mm. That was over. It was one call. They had people pull up, you know? So... In that space, my life changed. I didn't just get robbed from jewelry because I could buy more jewelry. I got robbed of my confidence. 
I got robbed of my 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 bravery. I got robbed of my joy. I got robbed of my happiness. I got robbed of so much in that that one moment of my life. And as much as I love God, I was mad. I was mad. I was like, God, why would you wait all these years for me to go through something like this? And it took me going through a healing journey in that space. I lost a lot in that season. God still allowed me to make millions, though. I go, I'm not, and that's when I knew God was with me. He said, Natalie, stop just doing things for money. I need you to get your soul back right. Mm. And I think that a lot of times we want money so bad. Like, we just want money so bad. And we think that money's going to solve everything. But if you don't have your core values in order, and if you don't live by a certain code in life that's non-negotiable, you will get humbled. So let's walk through this. This uh this time all right of depression, you get robbed. You mm-hmm. you making money. You let your guard down, your guard down. You know that you can buy the materials back, right? Yeah. So why are you so upset about losing them? I wasn't upset about losing it. I'm just I'm now a fearful woman. I've been a fearless woman for thirty three years. I'm thirty five now. Mm. I'm a fearless woman for thirty three years. All of a sudden, I'm scared of every damn thing, you know. And PTSD even like almost. It, I oh, I had the like. When I tell you I didn't know what PTSD was until I had PTSD, mm. like, my boyfriend at the time, like, if it, honestly, if it wasn't for him, like, I don't know. Like, I love God, and I, I wasn't trying to take my life, but I imagine living in a very, like, fearful space. I'm in the shower. Who's at the door? Like, I was just, like, it was crazy. Like, it was super crazy for me at that time, and I didn't realize that I needed help. I didn't realize I needed help. I thought I put, like, all my trust in him. Like, I felt like I made him my God at the time. Like, all right, you're going to protect me. But when he had to go back working and stuff, it was just like, all right, what's happening? Like, what am I going to do? Mm. So at that moment, I had to figure it out. I had to get a therapist. I had to get back in the church. I started talking about it to my mom and dad. Like, okay, I'm really nervous. Like, I'm this. Like, I started dealing with myself. Um, of course, I had security. But at the moment, I was just thinking to myself, like, I can't live my life like this. It how, was bad. How much pressure do you think you was putting on him? Because like usually, <laughs> when you in a par- when you in a partnership, right? You uh, we unintentionally put our problems on our partner, and I can only imagine, like you said, like I mean that's a bold statement. You were saying like you know you almost looked at him as your guy, right? And it's it's transparent, it's understandable. But I'm thinking with that comes so many expectations, right? Like you supposed to ex- you supposed to protect me, you supposed to do this, and when the first glimpse of it not looking like it going the way you think it should go, I'm assuming that could hurt and that could make <laughs> oh, you angry, God. right? That could be triggering, right? <laughs> yeah, this it's so crazy for even getting into this subject right now because um, I heard a lot of people in that season, including him, hmm. you know, and this is someone I've knew for years, I've known him for years, and sometimes you hurt the help. Hmm. And I was in a point where I had to save my own life. And it was very bad for me at that time. No one could help me. Not my parents, not him, not Coach Stormy. I needed to go back to Natalie. I was so far removed in like La La Land at this time. Like I'll be talking to you, Jay, and I'm not even here. Mm. That's how bad it was. Now I understand mental health. I did not understand mental health in the capacity until I went through it. So to answer your question, at the time, he did the best that he can do. He traveled with me, and he was, like, supportive and protective. But he needs to go back to work and do his thing, too. And I couldn't understand it at the time. At the time, I just was like, well, like, what am I going to do? Mm. <laughs> so I just stayed in the house a lot. I stayed in the house. I didn't really leave a lot. I didn't work out. I gained 50 pounds in the house. I ate a lot. Um, at the time, I just, like, I didn't want to make money anymore. Like, I wasn't into, like, I went from this big-time grinder like wanted to grind, and I did not want to make money. I felt like money was evil. Mm. And I was starting to tell myself, like, you don't need money. You just like, you good. Like whatever money you have right now, you straight. And I was I was living off my savings. Cause I, I was saving money. And I would buy stuff and the material stuff didn't work for me. I would, the Perkins, the Chanel's, like everything. Just nothing was okay. So I think I believe that God put me through that situation to honor my man whenever I do get in a relationship again differently to um, honor myself and love myself properly and to also uh, be gra- stay grounded mm. and never be too far removed. I always, Natalie, be considerate, be kind, be gentle, 
Mm. Be a better person. Be a good human being. Just because you're going through something doesn't mean the next person's not going through it. This is true. And that's like, I feel like the spirit I have now, I like her now. I wasn't liking who I was before I got robbed. Let's talk about Natalie right now, right? So, you know, it's so easy to look past the the self-development when you're struggling. Right, yeah. like it's it's hard to be creative when you're struggling. It's hard to do. <laughs> think about nothing. Yeah, it's hard to do anything when your bills not paid. You know what I'm saying? And when yeah. you're in that space, I think sometimes we suffer from hindsight bias, and just you know, it's easy to look back on something and say what you should do. Right. Right. But me, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I still, I wake up. I think it feels me like I wake up every day and I feel like I'm still in the trenches, even though I'm not. And I'm blessed to be here and I appreciate it. But I, I understand how it feels. So I'm you just talking stay to hungry. the people, talking to the people who's there. Right. How do we get it get to them self development over the money? Because nothing matters before your bills are paid. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not trying to hear none of that ground in. I'm not trying to hear none of that. I'm trying to get to this bag. I need this bag. So you you're not gonna want to hear this directly, but I'm just keeping a buck because I believe that um God is using me differently now. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a nice looking woman, you know what I'm saying? Like I take care of myself. I lost but I'm just being honest with you. Like I take care I I take pride in taking care of myself. For sure. And I read the Bible a lot and I respect every every you know religion but I my desires is now to tell people the truth because I make money in real life and I I've been doing I've been making money for a minute now right right now I realize that when the soul is right and when you get your like your soul together and your heart together you will live in abundance and I know mm-hmm. that sounds like oh my god she's like being like cloud 9 but it took me going back to a very low place to realizing that Natalie it was always in you. You've always been a grinder. But because you always chasing money, you sometimes don't pay attention to the little things in life. So at that season in my life, I just wasn't paying attention. Where I am now, so the person, the younger Natalie, is slow down a bit. Mm. Pay attention. Pay attention. Everything is not go, go, go. Sometimes I just take a minute. So when I wake up in the morning, I have a, I have a condo in Miami. I got a spot in L.A. Like, I, I, I love my life not because of the material things, but because who I am and being able to enjoy it now. Mm. And I still grind. Every single day, Jay, I get to it every day. But I will say this. For the person that like, feels like they're in this like whirlwind of like trying to grind, they're trying to figure it out, am I going to catch a break? Slow down just one second. What is that? How does that look? Because it, it's... it's... It's easy to say slow down, right? But somebody that that does not that feel like they can't catch a break, what does slowing down look like to them? Slowing down does not mean slowing down in real life. Slowing down means take a moment and just say, you know what, God, at this moment I need you and I need your guidance, I need your protection, and I need you to order my steps. And the first year I made a million dollars, I didn't make one million. I made four point three. I went from I made I went from three hundred forty thousand dollars a year to four point three million dollars. Mm. I'm telling I'm telling my secret of what I did. Mm. I slowed down. Talk to I us. slowed down for a, mo- a moment. And I said to myself, okay, Natalie, what do you really want right now out of life? Mm-hmm. Okay, the guys like you. Okay, they want to go on dates with you. Okay, the girls want to hang out. They want to go on trips. But outside of everything, what do you want right now? What do you want right this second? And when I made a decision... To just like take that moment to write out what I want out of life, what I want out of my man, what I want out of business, then now I have something to look forward to. Mm. But when you're just grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding, when I got my land beginning, it wasn't enough. When I got my other Range Rover, it wasn't enough. When right. I got a condo, a $4.3 million condo, it wasn't enough. Mason, you can go. My bad, I'm sorry. You can go ahead. Go ahead. It wasn't enough. Okay. Nothing was enough. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't enough. So that means now I'm not grounded. Mm. And when you get grounded, then you have goals that you can be aware of, whether it's your family goals, whether it's your kids, whatever it is. But you're still going to have that hunger inside, but now you're grounded and now you're able to hear from God. So now, example, I had a move I was going to make the other day. And something was telling me, like, I don't feel cool with it, you know? And I, I stayed in Miami. It was the best move I made. The matter of fact, there's a tornado in Houston. The, the 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 meeting I was going to take was for opportunity. I didn't need it, but I thought it was a great opportunity because it looked good. But I like I'm happy. I just slow down for a second. So slow down. I just love slow that. down for a second. Wrapping it up. But hold up. We got to yeah. hold up. <laughs> What's your favorite scripture? 
Oh, my favorite scripture is Mark eleven twenty four. Whatever you ask God for in prayer and believe it in your heart is already done. Like anything I ask God for, He always gives it to me. It's funny. Um, I was looking for that. Uh, Steve Harvey actually um talked about that. Really? I think um it's it's somewhere in Mark eleven some, but it's something about uh everything that you see in your dream is a preview to yep. to the existence. Yes. Right. And we talked. He talked about um how like. You think about a movie, right? Before a movie come out, everything the, it always got to be a preview to the movie. Always. So a lot of times you don't want to tell your dreams to people because they don't understand it because they don't see the same dreams yeah. that you have. But the fact that you had this dream is the fact that it could come to life. The fact that it's, it's going to come to life. You get what I'm saying? Because right. your dream is really just the preview to the existence that is going to come. That's and God can handle your dreams. And that's right. why he gives them to you. Okay. And okay had a dream, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, we have to always, as human human beings living in, as spirit beings living in this human experience this is a human experience god promised us heaven on earth so if, if my spiritual father promised me heaven on earth why do i believe that i have to settle why do i have to feel like my dreams won't come true my dreams will come true but i gotta believe it so that is how i live my life now jay is like this i used to get have anxiety i had adhd i was on medication i was on adderall for 10 years it was crazy for me and I just could not catch a break because I was always moving. Did the medicine help or hurt you? Like, did hurt me. It hurt you because some I, people say, um, you know, like the uh, anxiety thing is real. Some people say the medicine helped them. Some people say it don't do too. It much. helps you because that's, it's a band aid because you kind you think that that's helping you at the moment. Mm. When I got to network marketing, I got into my wellness products. I I have uh, vitamins that replace that now called NRG. But now when you get off of drugs, when you off the drugs, you now can feel it. Mm. When you can't feel it, you don't deal with it. Mm. Off, thing, off of the medication, off the Adderall, I can feel it now. So mm. now I know, why. okay, why do you feel anxious? Why are you getting too excited right now? Sit down, relax. I go to the sauna, I go work out. Mm. And, I, and I, that's my regimen now. What's some of the other products you got? Now, I'm going to send you a bunch of stuff because we all going to take it in here. And you, I don't need you to sign up. But my, my dedication in life right now is to help more of my people be healthy. Mm. I believe the only way we're gonna get to, to really accomplish our dreams is being the healthiest version of ourselves. And when I gained that 50 pounds, I was really, like I hated the way I looked. I didn't feel good, I was insecure about myself, and I couldn't even function like as far as like grind the way I thought I could grind because I was slowed down. So I love our products, I love the vitamins that we take, the Nutriburst, um, the NRG, the Detox D. I'll give you a bunch of stuff, but whatever you do, just you don't even have to be total life changes. I want everybody to take some time for themselves. Mm. Your body needs you. Mm. And your product is going to help us be able to slow down. Yeah. It's going to help us, you know, pay more attention to our body and get the nourishment that we need. It's going to give you a kicker. Like, instead of going, like, I got lipo before in 2012. Like, it didn't, it, that did not put me in a box to not gain 50 pounds. I, I laugh at people in my DMs or, like, my Instagram. They say, like, little smart stuff. Because if you look at my photos... I've always had a nice shape. I just, you know, my boyfriend was in the streets. He said he'll pay for it. Boom. Okay. It, let me tell you how God humbled me. I got robbed, gained 50 pounds. I had to use my products. I had to work out. So the products for me, I love them right now. And we that's a whole nother story. Don't start. With that, with that Don't start. <laughs> with Dirk say, she said she got robbed. Hey. The first thing that came to mind with Dirk say, say ungrateful little, give me them titties back. Nigga robbed you of your <laughs> Bro, I'm yeah. done. How they rob you of the light bulb? That's crazy. Like no. you got robbed, and you gained fifty pounds. Fifty that's, pounds. That's crazy. They got you robbed for surgery. I ain't never hear that. Look, you believe that? So I had to. So why I know this this next run I'm about to make when I'm about to run it up in network marketing right now because I got to transform publicly in front of everybody. Like I, I show people publicly, you got to work out. I still eat. Like I go out to eat and stuff like that. But I just watch what I eat and I just love the lifestyle I live now. But also, I mean, the image is definitely important for. For the business, though, right? For I, sure. The first thing I pop, I pop Coach Stormy. I pull up. She in the all Dior. You know what I'm saying? You pull up. With the, yeah, she fine in real life. Shark boots on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you pull up with that shit on. You feel me? That's important, though. But here's the deal: you can have all the nice stuff and still be a mess underneath. So. That's a fact. But people are so ignorant that that's how you can get their attention first. I was just telling my man, um, sometimes you gotta feed people candy inside the medicine. So like, yeah, you know what you're talking about, but if you look like if you look like a bum, people probably ain't paying, paying you no mind. Come on, ask you a question. So if I feed them the candy inside the medicine, mm -hmm. and I got my people, I got my tribe, I have a run, you have a run, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
for sustainability, you got to get to that core. For sure. So for someone like, I'm just saying us, right? Mm -hmm. And we're out here getting to it, we're grinding, and we just have the candy and the medicine, and they're coming, they're coming. We got to really run that real marathon, and we have to have the endurance, and, and we have to have the health, and we have to be able to feed the people what they need, or they're going to go somewhere right. else. You got to have a real purpose. Exactly. You got to stand on something. And that's what I'm on. You got to have a solid foundation. I, I don't if want you don't, temporary. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have a solid foundation, you could be speaking all the game you want, and niggas gonna look right through you like a glass wall. Right. You know what I'm saying? They'll so like you for a moment. And another thing is like, you know, you can have a million likes on Instagram and not like yourself. So until you really get to the core of liking yourself, then that's when your 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 motion and your brand starts to really take to go to another level. That's real motion. People be that's thinking they got motion. motion. You ain't got no motion. You don't even like yeah. yourself. I mean, you don't even rock with yourself. Facts. <laughs> nah, I appreciate you, man. I think this is a great conversation. Um, it was fun, informa inf informative. Uh, ent entertain. It was dope. I like this. I like what it you got. It was a vibe. On. Yeah, it was a vibe. Um, what you got going on now? Uh, you and eight the A for a little bit. Yeah, uh, so I'm launching one of the the largest woman movements in the world right now. What's that? So through Woman Who Boss Network. Okay. So the Woman Who Boss Num Network is the is gonna be the number one social playground for women across the world and teaching them just basic principles of life, how to become a proper story one woman. Like, I think every girl wants to be soft. I don't want to be soft. I want to be a virtuous woman. I want to be a woman that embraces her feminine femininity and her beauty and, like, really is able to handle life. So that's what I'm on right now, and I'm looking to build a tribe, whether you're from jail or Yale, whether you are 18 like to, to 38, whatever, 58, whatever, whoever you are, and you want to become a better version of yourself, I know that my playground that God has created for us is going to help them. I like it, man. I support the movement. I got thank on, you. You know, network and marketing. And I got to hop on a team. You know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> listen. That hey, that, that that's the best part of the interview. We're gonna, we're gonna recruit some people. Hop on a team. Listen, I'll tell you this. I'm a little game. Just some free things that people don't know. With our company. It's all about really referrals and using the product. So let's say you bring me 10 girls that I can coach and I can help. Mm -hmm. You make 50% every time they make a check. Mm. So we're going to have a conversation. Man, I, listen, I, I know, know the network marketing girls. game, man. I know you got 10 girls. <laughs> man, I, listen, I know the network marketing game. You feel you know, me? Like, no, but no, but all, all honesty, Jay, um, I'm not, I'm, if, if we ever do work together, cool, but it's really about the impact. So if you do know anyone, um, whether it's for Woman Who Boss, I have a store in the Houston Galleria and Embody, which is self-care athleisure line. Like, I just want to help more women. I want them to look at me. And I don't want them to look at the Birkins and the Lamborghini. I want them to see a girl it, like Natalie and say, you know what? If she can do it, I can do it. And I can get the tools and the resources to do it, not just because she's on social media. Like, I could literally come to her. Like, I was able to go to Coach Stormy and the other amazing women in my life, Lisa Nichols, uh, Nicole Park. I have a lot of dope women. My mom that I'm able to say, you know what? Come here. Mm. Come, come to my. Come to my. Come to my experience. So that's what I'm on right now. Nah, I pre. Listen, it's fire. Hey, the the uh, the, the, the the Lamborghini and the um the shoes gonna help though. It's gonna, it's gonna <laughs> it's help. A, it's man. a trinket. It's gonna yeah, help. Like, they gonna look at me. Oh, I could be like that. You know what I'm saying? No, you listen, could be like this. It's a trinket. Nah, but but 